how long should you be resting for between sets to maximize muscle growth? Let's break down the science. Welcome back, Dr. Milo Wolf here today with Strong by Science, bringing you the latest research on rest times for muscle growth. Before we delve into the science that actually looks at hypertrophy, we need to understand why we rest between sets in the first place. During a set, fatigue sets in and our force production capabilities gradually drop off. Eventually, we end that set and for our force production capabilities to return to a relatively productive level closer to what it would be if we weren't fatigued, we take a rest interval. But ultimately, when we're lifting weights, we're not really after just what is the best performance right now, unless you're competing in powerlifting, for example. But in other cases, we're more so after what is the best way to get a hypertrophy effect from this session. Without delving too deeply into the topic, how much rest you take between sets can have an impact on your performance and therefore how much tension the muscle experiences, which since tension is the main mechanism involved in producing hypertrophy is an important consideration. But the amount of rest you take between sets can also impact potentially other factors that can influence the ultimate muscle growth response. Let me give you a little bit of a throwback, go back in time a little bit. In the 2000s and 2010s, a lot of the discourse around rest times for hypertrophy was predicated on the idea that shorter rest times can lead to an increase in, for example, serum growth hormone, which since growth hormone can impact hypertrophy, that therefore means we should take shorter rest times, right? Well, as early as 2014, this was actually called into question by Henselmans and Schoenfeld, who pointed out that these small elevations in various hormones after a session by taking shorter rest times don't necessarily translate into long-term muscle growth. This is kind of the same reason why a lot of testosterone boosting supplements aren't necessarily effective for boosting long-term muscle growth. The small and transient short-lived increase in testosterone just may not even be sufficient to increase hypertrophy to an appreciable extent long-term, let alone the fact that most supplements don't even actually accomplish this. But enough about some of the mechanistic underpinnings of why we take rest times and how they might influence hypertrophy. What is the evidence that actually measures muscle growth say about rest times? How long should we be resting? Well, I'm actually involved in a meta-analysis on this exact topic right now, so in the next 12 months or so, there should be a paper out looking at exactly this topic with the most recent up-to-date research. But the most recent data we have on the topic is a systematic review from 2017. By and large, here is the biggest takeaway from that systematic review. If you're resting for a minute or less, all else being equal, if you're doing the same number of sets, you will likely see less muscle growth. So taking rest periods of less than 60 seconds or just a minute likely isn't ideal when it comes to hypertrophy. Turns out there is one more study that has come out since then looking at rest times for muscle growth. And that is a study by long going colleagues that was published in 2022. Here's what they did. Assigned participants legs to one of four conditions. In all four conditions, they performed the unilateral leg press. However, there were differences in how many sets they did and how much rest they took between sets. Condition one rested for one minute between sets. Condition two rested for three minutes between sets. Condition three also rested for one minute between sets, but did additional sets until they matched for volume load or sets times reps times weight with condition number two. And finally, condition number four took three minute rest intervals, but only did as many sets as it took to match volume load with a condition that only rested for one minute between sets. So essentially here, we had comparison of both one versus three minutes of rest, but also one versus three minutes of rest when the volume load was matched for. Because ultimately rest times don't exist in a vacuum. If you take less rest between sets, your session is over faster. But what could you potentially do with that additional time that you didn't spend resting? Well, you can do more additional sets. And that idea is exactly what this study looked at. Here are the results. Just like that systematic review I just mentioned pointed out, resting for one minute was inferior to resting for three minutes when they performed the same number of sets. However, when the one minute condition performed additional sets to make up for the additional volume load that the three minute condition saw, they actually got the same hypertrophy. So when you equate for volume load, the hypertrophy is actually very similar. What does this suggest? Well, it suggests that if you do want to take shorter rest times, say 60 seconds or less between sets, you can make up for this loss in hypertrophy by just doing more sets. Before I give you some takeaways from this whole body of evidence, let me look at some other evidence that might inform us as to whether or not longer rests are inherently better for hypertrophy. 
By my count, there are about four other studies we can lean on that didn't perfectly equate for everything, but that equated for most things, and importantly, compared a longer to a shorter rest time between sets. For example, in this study that used the same subjects in a within-participant crossover design, there was similar bicep growth whether the participants rested for two minutes or five minutes between sets. Next, in this study that compared doing sets of 8 with 3 minutes rest to doing sets of 20 with 30 seconds rest, despite doing the same number of sets, they actually saw similar hypertrophy between groups. If anything, the differences leaned slightly in favor of the shorter rest time group. The third study compared doing sets of 10 to 12 repetitions with 1 minute rest to doing sets of 3 to 5 repetitions with 3 minutes rest. They used a 4-day split targeting all of the major muscles in the body across the week. They measured muscle thickness of the rectus femoris, pectoralis major, triceps, and vastus lateralis, and even took DEXA scans of the whole body pre to post study. By and large, there were no major differences between the higher rep range group and the lower rep range group. The only difference that was somewhat notable in upper body lean body mass as measured by DEXA, slightly in favor of the group taking longer rest times, but performing sets of only three to five repetitions. This is notable because some evidence does suggest that performing sets of fewer than five repetitions does reduce hypertrophy compared to doing sets of more than about five repetitions. And the final fourth study compared doing three sets of six to eight reps with three minutes rest to doing three sets of 20 to 25 reps with only 60 seconds rest. There was some dietary control within the study to make sure the diet was similar between groups. However, the only muscle mass assessment in the study was a DEXA looking at lean body mass changes. There were no significant between group differences. However, the improvements from before the study to after the study were only significant in the group that took a longer rest times. So generally, across these additional four studies, you do also see that taking longer rest intervals on a set per set basis generally leads to similar muscle growth, if not slightly better. Importantly though, there is research on different set configurations and muscle growth suggesting that rest times aren't a super influential variable. Specifically, when you look at drop set research, for example, as was synthesized in a recent meta-analysis by Coleman and colleagues. When they just compared doing drop sets to doing straight sets with traditional longer rest intervals, they actually saw similar muscle growth. Likewise, the one and only potential study on myo reps, which hasn't been published yet, also found similar hypertrophy, whether performing myo reps, a training approach in which you take minimal rest between sets, compared to doing a more traditional training approach where you take longer rest intervals between sets. So very clearly, when you take all of this evidence put together, you can make great gains with shorter rest intervals. But if you want to make the same muscle growth gains as compared to using longer rest intervals, you may need to do additional sets to make up for the reduced performance in each set. And importantly, we really don't know whether doing fewer sets but with longer rest intervals is better, as far as overall hypertrophy goes in a real program, compared to doing more sets with shorter rest intervals. For overall cardiovascular health, there's a good chance that especially for older trainees, it may behoove you to do more sets with shorter rest times to accrue some more health benefits. However, from a pure muscle growth perspective, if I were to put my tinfoil hat on and speculate a little bit, I would probably see fewer sets with longer rest time intervals being superior to more sets with shorter rest intervals. But ultimately, more than that at this stage, provided you make up for it with additional sets, whether you take shorter rest times or longer rest times appears to be mostly personal preference whatever you prefer doing, as long as you work sufficiently hard. That is the video. I just broke down all of the literature on muscle building and rest times for you. If you like the video, please consider leaving us a comment, like, or subscribe. If you want to see us break down any other topics, leave a comment down below, letting us know what you want to see us cover. If you'd like to have a coach take care of your training and potentially nutrition for you as well, check out the Strong by Science coaching services at strongbyscience.com coaching. In the meantime, have a phenomenal day and we'll see you next time.